15. You is incredible. Shortly after burnout, we're going to allow them to unstrap and they will feel zero G or microgravity. And so they will have a uh, true space experience. And that will be uh, amazingly satisfying, I think, and uh, very satisfying from my point of view to share that experience with them. Spaceship Unity, welcome to space. Copy, base, million dollar view. Copy, spaceship rendering directly overhead the field. The, the big thing about this job is that nobody can do it on their own. You know, it's, uh, the, the only way we are going to succeed is as a team working together. Witness the second flight of uh, Spaceship Two into space, uh, the fifth powered flight overall, and uh, the first flight with a person in the back. So we had uh, Beth Moses, who's the chief astronaut instructor on board with us and she's evaluating the cabin. She's been involved in the uh, design and the manufacture of the, the cabin, the customer uh, experience part of the vehicle. And of course, that's what we're here to do. We're, we're not here as pilots to have lots of fun, you know, firing rocket motors. We're actually here to fly uh, people into space in our cabin. And so we've now entered this new phase in our test program where we're evaluating the cabin, the, the customer experience, and uh, we'll do a series of flights uh, for that. And uh, so it's another, for me, it's a milestone on our way to commercial operations. Sure, so I was uh, privileged to fly the right seat of uh, Unity today in the spaceship. And uh, uh, we started off with a beautiful morning climb out. Uh, uh, Kelly and CJ did a great job in White Knight, uh, the mothership carrying us up there. And we went up to the mid 40,000s of feet and uh, uh, smooth drop. Nice rocket motor burn, uh, it just it light off very smoothly and uh, Dave did a great job turning us into the vertical as, uh, as smartly as possible and uh, we were off to the races and uh, uh, you know it, I, this is my second powered flight uh, in, in Unity and, uh, and it, was, it was interesting because you try and take in more each time right and I was really trying to take in more of that rocket power experience. And our last flight, we got up to 171,000 feet or so. This flight, we got up to, towards 300,000 feet. And it's a significant difference up there and to, to see all that. And then, um, so basically once we got up there, I, my job was to run some checklists and run through some flows and uh, make sure the systems were ready for the, uh, the coast phase, the reentry phase, and then the glide phase, and, uh, and then the approach and landing phase. So uh, Dave, uh, I was fortunate enough, Dave did let me fly some exo-atmospheric with the reaction control system some of the re-entry and then uh, I got a little bit of, of glide time on the way back. So I, I definitely appreciated that. It's all part of my training as well uh, to eventually fly a spaceship from the left seat. Uh, yes, yeah, so we had uh, well, three people, Mach 3 to 300,000 feet. Um, you know, the, the second powered flight, the second uh, space flight, I should say, of uh, Spaceship Two, uh, only 10 weeks after the last one. Uh, and so that's a, that's a rapid turnaround. Um, first Scotsman in space. <laughs> um, fifth powered flight for uh, Spaceship Two. Um, so this, and uh, of course, obviously the person in the back, uh, Beth Moses in the back, Chief Astronaut Instructor. That's that's a big step forward. So uh, it was also the second payload flight. So we had the NASA Flight Opportunities Program, and we had uh, four um, payloads back there. Uh, so it's a revenue generating flight for the company as well. So, um, yeah, there's, it, it's a big, big flight. Uh, I said it's a privilege. It's surreal, really is. And I, I mentioned that, uh, that term surreal uh, uh, when I was up on stage today after the landing in that uh, the whole experience was surreal. And I, and I think, uh, you know, it is very humbling to be part of such a great organization, great community of people that are trying to achieve this goal of, uh, 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 of making space open for uh, more and more people. So, uh, you know, obviously I want to fly again as quickly as I can, right? Because that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think what we need to do now is we're going to take a look at all the flight test data we collected, and we collected a lot of it today. Uh, we're going to take a look at that data, and we're going to uh, then smartly move through a test uh, plan program that we already had established and uh, keep ticking off the boxes, so to speak, and get us ready uh, for our end goal, which is to take all of our future astronauts up into space and uh, one step at a time. The, the experience is quite extraordinary. Um, the, I, I, 
I was amazed at how much I could see, you know, and how far I could see. And I could see so far, I really couldn't recognize things. And it was just, there was so much out there. And, uh, and the other, well, the other, amongst the other impressions were how clear everything was. So just looking vertically down, it was just like, just very, very clear. No, it didn't appear to be any haze or anything. The, the sky is incredibly dark. The atmosphere is incredibly thin and beautiful. Which is a beautiful cyan line around the horizon, and uh, it's and and it was incredibly quiet. It was just pure. We could hear the silence of space almost. You know, it was just uh, almost a real experience. We have the manufacturing company TSC, and we have Virgin Galactic operating company. I look at unity is what really unites us. It will unite customers with each other from different parts of the world. It unites the past technologies with the future technologies and so I think it's got a lot of meanings to a lot of different people so it's a, I think it's a great name. I think a lot of times we all have to step back and realize what we really are doing right we're building on the shoulders of giants right as they say.